I've just arrived in Kigali, Rwanda's capital, and we're heading east to Akagera National Park. This is Central Africa's largest protected wetland and home to thousands of animals and birds. The Akagera National Park has been gazetted in 1934. It is among the oldest national parks in Africa. After genocide, by 1994, they have started a conflict between human beings and wildlife. And in this conflict, the park has lost more than 50% of animals that were here inside. By 1999, no, no lion was recorded into the park. So we had to introduce lions also in 2015. Now we are counting around 40 lions. So the numbers are coming again. There are still few, but now they are secured because we had defensed the park before bringing back lions. 100% of our profits are reinvested and they, we have experience, experts in conservation and everything is coming to normal. This is about monitoring of wildlife in Akagera National Park. Um, we monitor our key species, mainly uh, black and white rhinos. We also monitor lions and we also monitor elephants and, and giraffes and, uh, and leopards. Poaching is the main challenge. Uh, people killing animals and illegal entrances to the park. Um, but this challenge was here before. We lost a couple of animals due to poaching, but our law enforcement is really effective with that and uh, community engagement helps to educate the community to stop poaching, but also we try to give alternatives, employment, enterprises in the community to make sure that poaching is sort of eradicated or we keep it to minimum levels. Also within the park is the only hot air balloon experience in Rwanda. You can see the park in all its glory, plus catch the animals waking up as clouds give way to the sun. Akagera is home to several lakes, the largest of which is Lake Ihima. As well as a spectacular sunset, you can see the rarest species of birds resting on the fringes of the lake. We bid farewell to Akagera and head to Volcanoes National Park. It's a long five hour drive, but perfect roads and lush greenery throughout make every minute of it worthwhile. Along the way, we pass small villages bustling with commuters and shoppers and lots of people on bicycles. There are only two places in the world where you can see mountain gorillas in the wild and this is one of them. We are on our way to meet members of the Quitonda gorilla family. Due to uh, where they were uh, the day before, we can go following, following, and then basing on those uh, signs, you catch the nest. Then from the nest, you make sure this is the entry, this is the exit. So then you follow the tracks from the nest, keep going, keep going, you catch the gorillas. That's how the tracking goes. We don't base on any electrical material, they are not tagged. They can smell us before we get to them. Even I start hearing them. That means we are getting close to the gorillas. They're not facing this uh, poaching problem, but uh, when the poacher might set the traps, so there could be some uh, individual baby juvenile that can be caught in the, stra in the trap, in the snare. So they're mainly targeting uh, buffalo, uh, antelopes, and uh, yeah, bushbucks, that's their target. Spending an hour watching these gorillas this relaxed in their own habitat was fascinating. There is also the growing realization that there is very little that differentiates us from them. A few miles from the park's HQ, Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund have been studying these resilient animals and their habitat for around 50 years. 
The foundation aims to educate people on the importance of conservation and protecting wildlife so we can all enjoy it for years to come.